my name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. And today we are going to be doing a will I buy it video. Now, if you were tuning in today expecting to see the mascara ranking, that is has been postponed to next week because I just recently purchased the new Burberry mascara and it's not due to arrive until Tuesday or Wednesday this week. So I did put a poll on the community tab and the majority wanted to push it back. So that will be next Monday. And let's go ahead and get started with the Will I Buy It. Now, all of the photos and the information that I'm sharing with you today come from at Chic Profile Official on Instagram. That is Tavia's Instagram account. And she is the person you wanna follow for information on new and upcoming luxury beauty releases. She only covers luxury beauty items not drugstore. So pretty much all of her posts are something that I am interested in. So if you don't already follow her on Instagram, be sure to do so. I have her information listed down below in the description box. She also has a blog, chicprofile.com, where she goes into more detail and de tutorials and things that she's purchased and so forth on there as well. So definitely check out her blog. You can get further information on her blog than you can from the Instagram posts. So let's go ahead and start with the first launch. We're gonna be talking about the Dior Summer Collection. Now, this is a gigantic collection. We've got nail polishes, lip maximizers, lip glosses, uh, looks like the cheek balms, eyeshadow palettes, the nude luminizers, mascara, looks like dual-ended eyeliners. So there are quite a few things here. The main focus of interest, I think, for most people are going to be these eyeshadow palettes. I think I'm passing on these. They, they've got this marbled appearance where I feel like the colors are just going to be kind of washed out. Now, I have seen swatches of the more brownish palette, and it just didn't really call to me. So I haven't seen swatches of the other one, but they should be released relatively soon. I think next month, perhaps, or maybe at the end of March. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna pick up anything from these other collections. It's possible I'll pick up one of the nude luminizers. I have never tried one of those in that particular formula from Dior. So I might try that. I'm curious to see more about the mascara. You can see on the tube, it's got this really pretty like turquoise blue color on there. So I'm curious whether it's a colored mascara or just a different formula. Uh, so I need to see a little bit more about some of these other releases, but the cheek balms I typically pass on. Um, they're just not really my thing. And then the eyeshadow palettes I think are going to be a pass for me as well. So I, I don't know about this whole collection. Now Givenchy for their spring and summer collection, they're releasing three lip glosses. Now when you first look at these tubes, you can't really tell whether they're going to be like a liquid eyeshadow or a lip gloss, but we do have some lip swatches here. And they are, I, I can't tell if they're like a topper that you put on top or if they have a little bit of like color or something to them, perhaps like a color changing pigment or something, but I think they're more toppery. Um, they're probably a pass for me. There's also a highlight, it looks like. I'll probably pass on that as well. And two eyeshadow palettes are being re-promoted. Now I did recently pick up one of the Givenchy 9 pan palettes to test the formula. So I'm very curious to try that. I have been interested in uh, particularly this more like grayish greenish palette. In some pictures I've seen it has more of like a greenish tint to it, still gray, but with a greenish tint. So I'm kind of curious about that one. So if I like the formula, I may end up picking up that particular palette. I don't know about the other one. I have to see how pink it is but um, most likely this collection is going to be a pass. Guerlain is coming out, or actually just came out with their terracotta bronzers for this summer, and they look really nice. I'm actually pretty interested in the product itself, but I picked up the Holiday Guerlain bronzer, and you know that's a glowy one, that one's sparkly, but the, the terracotta scent, I'm just not sure if I like it enough to purchase one. So at the moment, I've passed on these. They are currently available at Sephora. I don't know whether I will change my mind and pick one up maybe during the Sephora VIB sale or something, which by the way, the dates of that have been posted. It's April, I wanna say Rouge was April 9th through the 19th. And yeah, you know, the others are kind of like different dates there. So we'll we'll see if I change my mind on that, but. 
at the moment, it is a pass. Next up, we have three Dior lipsticks with this beautiful imprint. Now, these are released in the UK for Mother's Day. I don't know whether they'll come to the US for the US Mother's Day, but at the moment, they are not available here in the US. So they have three shades. They look really pretty, but it turns out I actually have two of the three colors. So we've got the 100 Nude Look shade, which is matte, the 525 Sherry, which is metallic, and the 458 Paris, which is satin. So when I did the video on the new formula of the Rouge Dior lipsticks, I included the 100 Nude Look and the 525 Sherry. So if you're interested in seeing those, I do have a video with those up. I don't have Paris, but you know, if those do come to the US, I, I guess I'll take a look at Paris, but the other two, since I have them, they're a pass for me. Now, Hermes, we've got a few things from Hermes. First, we've got the new lipsticks for spring and summer, or I guess it's really a spring collection. So we have Coral Aqua, and I actually picked up the two brighter shades. So this one here is Coral Aqua. And you can see that it's a beautiful coral shade, but it's really a balanced coral, which makes it very wearable. And then we also have number 43, Rose Oasis, which is like a bright pink. These shades are perfect for the summer. I really love these two that I picked up. The third one, when I ordered, um, the third one's called Beige et, et Bleu. I'm not sure how to say that. But when I ordered these two, that one was not yet available. So I'm trying to be good and not pick that one up, but it does look very pretty. So probably passing on the third, but I do really like the two that I picked up. And I've kind of decided that the coral is probably my favorite just because it's more unique to me than um, the bright pink because it is really hard for me to find a coral lipstick that I can wear. So this one I think actually looks really good on me. So I, I really, really like that color. And for me, that was definitely a good purchase. Now Hermes is also coming out with blushes. And if you've been on social media, you know that that's been like the major talk this past week. So they are releasing eight shades of blushes. The price point has not been disclosed yet. They are due out in the US in April. Now of the eight shades, one is gonna be an Asian exclusive. There's also a pochette or like a, a little bag to carry, like it's got a little place to put your blush and a travel size brush that they are also releasing. And you can't really fit much else in there. Uh, possibly maybe a lip gloss or, or maybe a credit card, but you're not going to have like a place for like your phone or anything like that in there. So it's a, a tiny little bag. Passing on the bag for me is just something I wouldn't use. And then they're releasing a travel size brush, which I just mentioned, um, which will fit in that particular bag, but they're also releasing a full size brush. And this looks like an angled cheek brush and it is supposed to be all goat hair. So I am interested. I'm, I'm curious about it, but honestly, the price point is going to be a determining factor with the brush because I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how those brushes would compare to like Chikahoto or Hakahoto. So we shall see, but I am definitely interested in the blushes and depending on how expensive they are, depends on how many I pick up, but I am planning on getting at least one. Next, Suko is releasing two quads for pre-summer. I'm not sure if anything else is being released with these. I've had a hard time finding photos of this. Uh, I guess they, when I saw them, they were probably on stories because they don't seem to be on the Instagram feed of any of the accounts I usually check. So they have two palettes. So excuse this photo that I'm showing here. This was the one I had posted to my stories. They look really pretty. I'm particularly interested in the purple one and these top shades are supposed to be like a duochrome, but I did see them. They look more um, toppery. So I don't know if they're even going to be something that I'll have access to. I have heard that they will be available at Selfridges, but I've also heard that they will not be and they will be an Asia exclusive. So I'm not sure whether there's even access to it, but if the pre-summer collection is available, I am interested in picking up probably the purple one. I don't know, maybe both, but probably the purple one for sure. Now the summer collection from Suku, they have two more palettes 
And they've also got two more of the liquid eyeliners. The picture is a little small to really tell what the colors look like, so I'm curious about that. They've also got two nail polishes, which, you know, I can't get shipped here, so I'm passing on those. There's this powder, which looks really intriguing, and in different photos, it's looked slightly different. In this one, it looks a little darker, but in others, I've seen it and it looks really light where it could actually be potentially like a highlighting powder. So I'm not really sure. I need to see a little bit more about the particular powder, but I do like it and I like how on the one end, it's kind of got like the mix of colors like the Guerlain Meteorites and so forth. I've also heard that that end part is kind of a highlighter and the other parts like an actual face powder. So I really am not sure much about the details of that. So I'm definitely like kind of staying tuned to figure out more information on that, but I am interested. There are also gonna be four more lip fogs and lip glows or two more of each. And they look very pretty, but they also look fairly similar to colors I already have. So, I don't know if I'll be picking up any of those. I need to see more swatches than just this, but at the current time, I am planning on passing on those. And the eyeshadow quads, I'm not sure if they're my colors or, or well, they look very pretty, but you know, they also look fairly similar to combinations I can make from the ones I just picked up. So at the moment, they're kind of a pass. I do really like the liquid eyeliner from Suku, so depending on the shades, that would be something I would pick up from this collection. Now Dior, their fall collection has been leaked already. That actually was kind of leaked, I think maybe before the summer collection, but this was actually supposed to be the fall collection for 2020 and they pushed everything back because of production and so forth. So they have two palettes. I am interested in the green one. I have seen swatches, I posted them on the Instagram stories of uh you know the comparison with this one and jungle they are fairly similar with the green shades so i'm not sure i need to see a little bit more detail on that because if it is like too similar i'll pass on it but it does look really pretty the other one looks really nice as well but it looks more like uh something better for warmer skin tones so i'll probably pass on that color story and i have not seen swatches of that one so we'll kind of have to wait and see but those are the fall palettes that are due out 2021 now, but originally 2020. Next, we have the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette. And this has a lot of bright colors. It's kind of like a crazy uh, arrangement of shadows in the palette. You know, I'm, I'm going to pass on this. It, this is one of her larger pan palettes, the $129 palettes. If this was something that was in a smaller palette, I would consider picking it up because it is, you know, useful to have some of these bright shades on hand. I think the color story itself, you know, it's kind of crazy in the effort to inspire you. I think kind of the same idea behind the Byredo Prismic palette, but it's just, it's not for me. So I am passing on it. I am kind of interested in the colors, but for this size palette, I'd rather have something small because it's not something I would get a lot of use out of. So it will be a pass. Next up, we have the Tom Ford Coquette Eyeshadow Palette. And we had seen pictures of this months and months back and I thought it was coming out with the uh, Desert Fox, but it turned out Insolent Rose came out then, which I had not seen any photos of that one previously. So I don't know what's going on with Coquette. I have heard from different sources that yes, it will be available in the US. I've also heard that no, it will not be available in the US. So I don't know which it is, but if it's available, at least on Selfridges, I'm interested in picking it up. I like this color story a lot. And although this isn't my favorite formula, I did really like the one, particularly the Desert Fox, it blended so nicely. So if this is similar to that, I would pick this one up. But if not, you know, I'm, I'm not too upset if I can't get this one, to be honest. Next, we have Burberry and we've got a new cushion foundation that's coming out. There is a small shade range here. There are only six shades. This is geared towards the Asian market. I'm not 100% sure that'll be available in the US, but I believe it will be. And there's also a new glow foundation, which I believe is already out in Canada. So if you're in Canada, you can pick that up already. I know, um, Gigi, I'll leave her channel down below. She did a review on it already. I did not watch it because I try not to watch 
any reviews of things that I plan on picking up just so I don't, you know, have any, any like bias or anything. So I, I didn't watch it, but I know she does have a video on it. Um, I, I'm interested particularly in the glow foundation. I'm not sure about the cushion. I may pass on that. The eyeshadow palette I'm definitely interested in. I've been stalking the site. I thought it was supposed to be released on February 19th. And that was based on a comment from Isamaya French who posted something about it, but it didn't come out. I've been checking every single day, multiple times a day, and it still hasn't been released. But then the mascara just popped up and was available a few days ago, so I ordered that. So hopefully the palette is coming soon. There are also supposed to be a couple of new lipsticks. So basically, if you look at the Burberry website, the gold packaging items are going to be the new new items, the newly formulated items and so forth. And the gunmetal packaging are the older items. So they have a couple of gold packaged lipsticks on there. Those are from the holiday collection, actually. There's like military red and I forget what else is up there, but they have two like liquid lips and two regular lipsticks that were from the holiday collection. There's supposed to be two additional shades of the lipstick, at least for this spring collection. One is a bright orange and one is called cherry red. So I don't know. I still haven't seen, you know, much about them. I saw like a post or two about them like a couple months ago and nothing since then. So I'm not sure if that's been canceled or not but I would be interested in checking out the new lipsticks and definitely the eyeshadow palette. And again, I have the mascara coming. Next, we have some items from NARS and NARS has a new cushion. It's got, they have a tinted moisturizer coming out, which I've heard good things about their tinted moisturizer in the past. So I know there are a lot of high hopes for this new one. And then there are some palettes coming out. This is just gonna be a pass for me. I don't know. There's something, I'm just not a huge NARS fan. So I, they're typically a pass for me and they gotta, there's gotta be something that really wows me for me to kind of, you know, try it again. So, uh, they're going to be a pass. Guerlain is coming out with Kiss Kiss Shine Bloom lipsticks. So they just came out with their Kiss Kiss Tender Mattes a month ago. I really like them. I would pick up a few more shades, probably wait till the fall because I don't wear a lot of matte lipsticks during the spring and summer. But the Shine Bloom is gonna be a high shine formula. It actually looks a lot like the new lipsticks from the Chanel Coco Bloom. It looks like they kind of both have the same type of finish. And I am definitely interested in picking up some of these. Now, based on the Kiss Kiss Tender Matte price, I believe those are $39. So that's what I would expect for the Kiss Kiss Shine Bloom price as well. They will probably make it to the Guerlain website prior to any official retailers. And I believe they are due out in April. So definitely interested in these. They have quite a few colors to choose from. And then the Chanel Coco Bloom lipsticks, as I mentioned, they look to have the same type of formula, you know, like something high shine like this. And, you know, they have 20 shades coming out and they're coming out this week, March 11th, I believe. They already have them, the shades posted on the Chanel website. So if you go to the Chanel website and you put in Rouge Coco Bloom in the search bar, you can pull it up and you can see all of the shades. You're just not able to pre-order or order them yet, but you can go through and they have lip swatches on the models if you scroll down. So I've been looking at that and picking colors, trying to narrow things down, but they definitely look really pretty. So I'm interested in picking up some of these as well. And I will definitely compare them to the Guerlain as well. Cogendo, they have a new palette coming out. This is like an all-in-one face palette, it looks like. So there are some, I'm not even exactly sure. I haven't seen many details. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but it looks like, you know, you've got blush and eyeshadow, maybe like a bronzer or contour and so forth. And I don't know, like normally I would say, yes, definitely want this. But last year I tried some of their color cosmetics and they were just okay. So I wasn't really a huge fan of them, so I'm kind of leaning towards passing on these unless I see like stellar reviews from other people and then decide to pick it up. But I think I'm gonna pass on the Cogendo palette. Next, we have some items from Bobbi Brown and I'm not sure of everything that's in this photo. There's definitely a new cushion, it looks like, and a palette. And I'm passing on these, the, you know, the palette, it's too pink. I'm, I'm not interested in all of the pinks. 
and honestly I'm like kind of tapped out on foundations and things so I've got a few on my list that I still want to get that are coming out this year but then I'm I think I'm kind of done with foundations I have so many I want to use up I, I don't want them to all go to waste so I'm almost done with foundation so this one is not going to make the cut by the way, I don't have a photo of it, but Clay de Pau is releasing a new version of their foundation. It's going to be like the uh, Radiant Fluid Matte Foundation, but a, like a glow version. So that, is, I believe, is coming out in July, and that's one that's kind of on my list. So we've got that, the Burberry, and um, another one. <laughs> Let's talk about that now. We've got the Givenchy. I just ordered this one from Sephora. It was available, well, it's now available on Sephora. It started off as Rouge Access only. So I picked that up and that should be coming sometime this week, hopefully. And I'll be picking this one up and reviewing it. I think it sounds like a really nice foundation. I feel like a lot of the Givenchy products are kind of underrated. There are actually a bunch of reviews of this foundation on Sephora already from people who got it from Influencer and it sounds really nice so we shall see i definitely want to try that i really wanted to try the new dior foundation that was one that was on my list but i had to cross it out because this is the dior natural nude foundation it's now on the dior website and it looks like a great foundation but unfortunately i have the hardest time finding a color match in dior and I don't have a color match in this range so they have a very narrow shade range and you know honestly most of their foundations they're always like too yellow on me i was still willing to to try it out but the lightest shade that i would match to is not included in this range so unfortunately i am passing on the natural nude foundation the primer i already picked up i really like the primer a lot so i've talked about that in a few videos most recently in the February repurchase, repurchase review, it's a really nice moisturizing foundation. I think it's going to be great for people with dry skin, but even if you, if you have like normal to dry skin, I think it's also great. It works well for me. I'm not sure about oily skin or not. It might be too heavy. I don't think they would like the texture. If you've got oily skin, but I don't know for sure. So it's a really nice primer though. I like the primer. The cushion powder, I picked up the lavender shade. I've talked about that on my channel already as well. So that's right here. And they do sell this in like other shades, you know, beige shades and so forth. But this is the lavender. I think it's a nice cushion powder. I like the packaging a lot. I love the shade of the powder. I think it's gives a really nice blurring effect. Um, lavender is a shade that I like to use a lot for, like color correction, particularly under the eyes and so forth. So I really like that. However, I just don't find this powder to work best with all different foundations. I find that I have to kind of be careful what I pair it with because it's kind of one of those like moist powders. So I feel like if I use it with a foundation that is more moist or like glowy or dewy, that it kind of adheres to certain spots on my skin. It's kind of like the moisture attracts the moisture and it just doesn't look as smooth. But if I put it on something more matte, it looks beautiful. So I think it just kind of depends what I pair it with, but I do really like the powder. It's just not love. Now I know several people are interested in lavender powders. So I did just order two more from Sephora that should be coming with the Givenchy foundation. So I ordered the new Fenty one, which gets great reviews and actually one from Guerlain as well. So we'll see how they all compare and I will definitely do a video on the different lavender powders at some point after I've used all of them. Next up we have the Katie Jane Hughes makeup brushes and this is a collaboration with Spectrum Cosmetics or Spectrum Collections. And these are synthetic makeup brushes. There are a ton of them in this set. I did order it and I know a lot of people ordered it or tried to order it. Some people got their orders canceled. It was kind of a mess, you know, but they are, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's coming back. They'll have it as a set. And then in a few months, they're also going to be selling the brushes individually. So they, they start shipping, I think in two more weeks. So hopefully I'll get mine within the month and you know, I'll start testing them out. So I'll let you guys know what I think of the brushes and whether or not they are worth it. But 
if you follow Katie Jane Hughes on Instagram, like I do, you know, you can see she's been using the brushes constantly and they seem to perform really well. Of course, she is a makeup artist, so she's probably really good with any brush. So moving on, we also have the Viseart. This is the GPX One palette. So they took the Grande Pro One palette and if you've been looking for that, that has been out of stock for quite a while. They only make it like every so often. And they that one is basically gone. So GP1 is gone. And now what they've done is they have decreased the shadow size. So we've gone from, I think it was 62 gram shadows before, and now we have 65 one and a half gram shadows, if that's right. So there are 11 new shades, I believe. You know, to be honest, Viseart on their, if you go to their website, they actually have a comparison between the old GP1 and the new GPX1. So they have been very clear about what colors are in each palette and the size and everything. So if you already have one, definitely take a look at that. I would say if you already have GP1, you don't need GPX1 because again, most of the colors are repeats. They are going to be making the shades from this palette available as singles. They might already be available as singles on their website as well. So, you know, if you are missing a few shades that you want, you can pick those up individually. This is a palette that I definitely want to get. So I haven't gotten it yet. I would really like to be able to get it on sale. So I will probably pick this up at some point. I was just kind of hoping to get some more of these releases out of the way first but the GPX One palette is one that I want for sure. Now, if you like the Viseart Grande Pro palettes, they, I believe there is a planned redo of GP3 as well, but GP2 is gone, it's not coming back. So if you find it in stock somewhere, I believe Sephora still has it. Um, you know, you can pick it up there, but it's not in production, it won't be made anymore. Unfortunately, the pigments that they use for that palette have just gotten too expensive, so they have no plans on redoing that particular palette. So I believe one and three are going to be, you know, reimagined like this GPX one, but number two is not. So yeah, I mean, I don't have to, but I would like to get it. And if it's there during the Sephora VIB sale, I am going to try to pick it up. So that's basically everything for this video of will I buy it? I would love to know what you guys think. And again, oh, just one thing to note, the photos that I got directly from the websites were the Katie Jane Hughes, the Viseart, and the, um, yeah, so th that's basically it. Just those two came from the websites. Everything else came directly from Tavia's Instagram account. So if you want to follow her, again, she's at Chic Profile Official. Information is down below in the description box. So I would love to know what you guys are interested in, what you plan on picking up, what you have picked up recently that has been a success. So thank you so much for sharing and for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button right down below and the notification bell so you know when I have a video up next. And I will see you very soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.